got a little uh, timer on there. That obviously, it's already started. Yeah. So you've got the time here. Oh, the time's here. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll count you down for 11.55. And then quick, if you finish quickly, you can take some more questions. Yeah, I should be done. OK. Are you going to be over there? I'm just going to be sitting here. So I'll just hold this signs out and then wave them a little bit and give me a nod and I'll see you next. Yeah, sure. Okay. Cool, have fun. <laughs> okay. Let's welcome our next speaker. Uh, his talk uh, will be connecting those thoughts, personal knowledge management with Python. Let's give a big warm welcome to Mark Farrer. Hi, I'm Mark. In the past year, I've been a master's student at Cambridge, specialising in health data science as part of the new MPhil program in population health sciences. Um, during my studies, I wrote all of my notes in a digital format um, in software called Obsidian. Um, what I found very powerful about being able to write my notes in, in that way was the ability to connect those notes to each other. Um, and I also wrote, I developed a Python package called Obsidian Tools to, to analyze those notes and help to improve my knowledge workflows. Um, so I'll, I'll go through that towards the end of the talk. Uh, in, t in terms of the, the outline, so um, I'll kick off by doing an introduction on personal knowledge management, PKM for short. Um, so essentially PKM covers um, the systems that people have developed over time to, to take notes and to manage their knowledge. Um, and, and towards the end of that main section, I'll cover this, this idea on connected notes. Um, and, and to put those connected notes into context, I'll go through the notes that I, I wrote during my, my MPhil. Um, ho hopefully, I'll be able to do uh, an interactive animation of that. Um, and then towards the end, I'll go through the, um, my Python package, Obsidian Tools, uh, some of the functionality and just a brief slide on some of the data science challenges that connected notes have, because um, I've worked as a data scientist as, as well. Um, so this, this massive QR code has some extra material, so feel free to um, scan that while, while you have time. Um, to, across the talk, I'll be talking about things that there's more material on um, in that link. Um, so in, in case you want to look at um, some of the PKM concepts that come up, um, you can um, ha have a look at that. Um, th so this talk only introduces PKM and uh, an application of it through my notes. Um, so if you want to go into more depth on um, what is PKM and um, e even developing your own notes over time, um, then um, there'll be some useful material in there if, if you want. I mean, it only really scratches the surface. There's, there's a lot that... I'm still learning. OK, so here I'll be doing an introduction to, to PKM. Um, so scholars have developed um, systems over time for um, managing their knowledge. Um, and or, hundreds of years ago, um, scholars um, e even just wrote notes on, on index cards and, and stored them in slip boxes, um, even on a larger scale. Um, that they would store it in filing cabinets. Um, so, so this is called Zettelkasten, um, literally slip box in German. Uh, I hope I've not butchered the pronunciation of that. I've not, not studied German, but uh, you, you can call it Zettel for short, uh, as some people do. So, so essentially with Zettelkasten, um, you have one index card uh, that, that carries, that contains one note, so that could be it could be one, one concept, one idea, one thing. So some people even title, have a title for a note as a timestamp to, to capture that moment in time that they had a thought. Um, so, so depending on how you um, name your notes, um, you could organize your notes by, by their content, by their subject matter, or even just chronologically over time when you created those notes. Um, so, there's one um, sociologist, Nicholas Luhmann, who, who developed his own Zettelkasten in the 20th century. He had over 90,000 notes, 90,000 notes, just absolutely 
ma massive in scale. Um, in, in that QR code, the um, material in there, I've, I've got a link to um, a digitized version that's, that's available online of, of his notes. Um, but some scholars before him even um, developed Zettelkasten system before that. So, for example, Carl Linnaeus uh, in the 18th century, he had his own collection of notes in a Zettelkasten um, of, of a few thousand notes. In, in terms of use cases of personal knowledge management, I've got a few listed there on the screen, and yeah, that only just covers um, some of them. So that the first two or three are the, the main ones, I'd say. Um, so for study notes, um, the, the first one, um, th this talk I'll be covering that at a deep, deeper level. Um, so I'll just keep it to that for now, um, but there'll be more on that later. Um, this, the second one there, daily notes. This is, this is quite a big thing, actually. There are so many different things that people can capture in notes on a daily basis. So, 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 so people often make note-taking a daily habit, um, and it could cover a variety of things. For example, um, keeping track of fleeting thoughts that someone's had during the day, to-do lists or tasks to cover over that day, a gratitude journal, um, just keeping track of, of things that they feel grateful for during the day, uh, notes from meetings, notes from conversations, and even tracking their mood uh, across time. You know, how, how do I feel today? How has that changed? Um, I, I've put Wiki there, um, probably something you're, you're familiar with if you've used the internet a fair amount. Um, and those last two there are, are quite specific ones. Um, I, I've mentioned those because I have some links for, for examples in them in that extra material. Um, so I put there uh, a log of books that, that you've read or want to read. That, that could be one way you make some notes on, on those things and even just um, collecting recipes. Um, so, so people have developed templates through uh, software that I'll go through shortly um, for, for, for those use cases. Um, so let, let's have a look at that software. Um, so the focus for the rest of this talk is going to be on connected notes. Um, the main software options for that are Obsidian MD and Rome Research. I personally use Obsidian. Both have only gained traction in the last two to three years. So, so connected notes are fairly new. It's also worth mentioning, though, that, that some SaaS solutions can be used for PKM. Notion is an example of, of software that um, people use in, in teams for, for project management and, and note taking. In the extra material, I've included a blog post that um, gives an example of how Notion can be used for, for PKM. Now, introducing Obsidian. Um, Obsidian is free to use PKM software, which is cross-platform. In contrast, Rome Research is not free. I think the pricing plan is about $10 per month. Um, essentially of those, you, you write your notes in markdown files and make connections to them through Wikilinks. So you see there in, in, in purple the, um, the link there in double square brackets. Um, that, that's, a, that's an example of a Wikilink. Um, Markdown is, is a versatile format, and Obsidian supports extensions to Markdown to uh, capture um, extra functionality. For example, um, having LaTeX math equations um, stored. I was using those quite a lot in, in, in my own notes. Uh, well, the, the ethos of Obsidian is that you have total control over your notes on your local machine. This helps to avoid issues with um, vendor lock-in, such as um, when, when cloud services f f for notes just, just disappear or, or shut down over time. OK, so I'll be going through something hopefully more interactive on the notes that I've developed. This, this here is an annotated um, knowledge graph of, of, of the notes that, that I wrote on my course. So, as I said in the introduction, in, in the past year, I studied um, my MPhil degree at the University of Cambridge. I did a quantitative program in, in health data science. Um, so you'll see some of the modules that are on there are, are very quantitative in nature. So all my notes were captured through Obsidian, and this is a graph view that you can access in, in, in the app. Um, and I've colored them by the, um, the modules, the, the, the concepts, the notes, um, relevant for. 
for example, um, epidemiology, um, the notes that are in yellow uh, are for that module, and I have notes on machine learning in the top left corner um, in shades of pink. So I, I studied 11 modules on, on my course uh, in areas such as epidemiology, biostatistics, public health, um, genetic epidemiology, and genomics. Now, I'll, I'll go through a few slides on, on notes and how, how I've changed those over time. So, so this note, uh, its title is Outbreak Response. Um, and this, this is a concept in public health. Um, this, this slide shows how the note is rendered in Markdown. Um, so, so you'll see the, the bold, for example, and um, the, the links in there. So what I like about this note is that it's a good example of illustrating the power of connecting your thoughts. The steps involved in the response to a disease outbreak are listed here in bullet points. So th th this is from um, a textbook or a handbook on epidemiology. Um, and yeah, those, th those bullet points encompass multiple topics. So you can draw links to new or other, other concepts um, in, in those purple links. But when going back to this note recently, I realized there was another link that I could create in this list. If we look here, um, I, this bullet point, the, the fourth one, you might, you might not be able to see it at the back, but um, es essentially um, there's, there's this one here about case definition and case ascertainment. So when I looked at this, I thought, oh, this is a concept that I could move some content into here and create a new note. So essentially, I'm repurposing my notes to, to break them down further um, in, in, this, in, this, um, in this note here. So, so this image shows the actual markdown content, how, how it's written. And when you see um, the, the, all the purple in, in the, the bullet points, the, the, these have the wiki links, how, how they're written. So um, it has uh, the name of the note, then you have uh, a separator, and you can do an alias um, so that uh, when, when you do your notes, you can um, yeah, ha have them in a more intuitive format like you'd see, say, on Wikipedia. OK, the, f the final slide here on um, um, the, these notes. So this, this shows how outbreak response is rendered. And, and what I've done is I've, I've hovered over the the wiki link for the new note on case definition. So yeah, this it's probably doesn't do it justice, but in the app, it, it's very interactive. You can um, see things on, on the fly a lot more. Um, and yes, essentially, this is doing a preview of, of the new note. Um, so that, that was a quick walkthrough of how I edited my notes to organize the content better. Um, I, I'm not pres prescriptive of uh, the knowledge management approach. Um, but for me, breaking down concepts into more notes is, is, is I, I found it useful for um, representing distinct concepts and um, just, just managing my knowledge a bit better. Um, so this, this idea of having one note represent only one thing or an idea or uh, a concept is, is a philosophy of making notes atomic. Um, you can see the extra material for um, some information on atomic notes. Um, there are also some uh, methodologies that people use, such as evergreen notes. And um, in, in that philosophy, um, atomic notes are one of the, the foundations of how that approach is done. OK, so this hopefully is an animation. Yeah, I can see it. Move along, along now. Um, so I'm going to have to try and keep up with this. There's a lot to explain. So it's a two minute animation. Um, so the first set of modules on my MPhil uh, were studied by all students, regardless of how quantitative their specialisms were. In my first two months, I studied epidemiology, th those notes there in yellow, and statistics, those notes in red that are forming over time. Um, epidemiology is a study of disease. And stats methods are core to research in that field, for example, to, to estimate the risk that individuals, an individual has of developing disease. 
Um, by the end of the year, I had over 250 notes. Those new ones that are forming now, um, I, I finished off in 2021 um, by um, learning public health, those notes in blue, data analytics in R, those notes in green, and research skills in purple. Oh, now it's going into 2022 there. Um, so I studied my elective modules this year, um, which were quantitative in nature, so they're forming more on the right-hand side. Um, uh, so the, um, those are all in the realm of statistics. Um, so the notes in shades like pink and salmon uh, are in areas of stats and machine learning. Uh, and looking now at the top, um, top of the graph, there are notes there in shades of spring green, um, which are in the areas of genetic epidemiology and genomics. While developing these notes over time, it was becoming clear to me how concepts across the different modules relate to each other. And it's, it's like a constellation of stars swimming before your eyes. Um, being able to view notes in a graph like this enabled me to reflect on which, which concepts are, are key to different topics, which were at the intersection of different topics, and what, what new connections could I draw between different concepts. I'm doing my own analytics of the notes in Python via my package it was also a game changer for me uh, for improving my note taking and my learning. Yeah, I think we've reached the end of that animation now, that's great. Now on to my, my package called Obsidian Tools. Um, so, that, so the package is available on PyPI to download. Um, my, my first release was was a year ago, just, just around the time I started my degree. Um, but I did more development earlier this year. Um, so the, the package now on GitHub has over 100 stargazers, so it's, it's gaining some traction for um, analytics of Obsidian notes in Python. So in terms of the setup, it's, it's actually quite straightforward. Um, so this, this is the, the main thing you need to do here with a collection of notes. So um, you, you initialize a vault object, if you can see um, there. So I've imported the, um, the API, and uh, I've initialized this um, vault object. So um, you, you essentially point to uh, a directory of your notes, where your notes sit. Um, and you can specify other config, like whether to, to focus on a set of subdirectories. So that list up there, that's the list of um, modules, folders that I had. Um, and so, so in, in Obsidian, a, um, a vault refers to um, a collection of notes. So they'd be stored in one directory, and in the app you can um, access multiple vaults. If I mean, I've got quite a lot of those now, so um, this is by far my biggest vault. Um, Obsidian Tools is a Fluent API, uh, and there are two methods, there are two main methods to call here. The first one, connect, um, is needed to to build the network that you saw earlier, um, that you'd seen in the Obsidian app. Um, and the, yeah, the, the final network in the animation is recreated via the, the network X package. The second method, gather, um, is used to, to store the text from files in a format that is, is fit for um, text analytics and NLP. Um, and, and this here is an example of um, my um, note metadata, some summary statistics on them. Um, so the metadata on your notes can be accessed via this simple function, get note metadata. Um, this, this accesses information in, in a pandas data frame. Um, in these stats, you can see that I have 576 notes um, that have content in files. But you also see it says there are nearly 820 notes in the vault itself. In other words, there are hundreds of notes in the graph that we'd seen earlier that don't have a file yet. Um, so there are links, there are wiki links to them from other files that exist, um, but those hundreds of notes have yet to be created, so those might be ones that you create one day. Um, and yeah, there are thousands of, of wiki links that, that, that are in my notes. Um, th this was just from one year of study. Um, and in my first three months, I had over 250 notes, um, so I could see it developing over time, and that was kind of egging me on to, to, to keep building it. 
Um, but some vaults that people have have thousands and thousands of, 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 of notes. Here for, here for the NLP analytics, this is something that was very interesting to me. Um, so the summary stats in the previous slide, you could do that just from calling the connect method. But the next thing for doing NLP analytics, you have to call the gather method. Um, and with, with this, um, this, this is some content from um, after a, developing a basic spacey pipeline um, to, to get word counts for each of my notes. Um, and and this, is, this is all stored in a dictionary called um, word, content, uh, word count index. And fr from these code snippets, you can see that I have over 140,000 words from my notes. That average is 250 um, words per note, which is around what you could fit on a printout of an A5 page. So it's very much like something you could fit in a, in a notepad um, per note. Um, there, there are some notes that did have a lot more content. So you'll see ones up here like genetic association that have over a thousand words. Um, something key here is that there's not one way of doing notes. Some people might think that, that notes that are that large can be broken down much further into smaller concepts um, in the principle of atomic notes. Um, but for my study, I, I structured it so that it's like a wiki, and it definitely served my purpose as well. Now, just one, one slide left on data science challenges. Um, so um, this, 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 is, this is a tweet here by the um, creator of Rome Research. Um, he has a 150K dollar bounty for, for someone who can develop uh, an extension for, the, um, for, for Rome Research to make connections, new connections between notes. Um, what's interesting about this challenge is that it involves two types of data. It involves um, the network graph data and text data. Um, so some questions that you might ask yourself in, uh, in your notes could be, for example, what are the most central notes in, in, in my vault? Um, what are the main topics in, in a note or in a collection of notes? I mean, like keywords, those kind of things. So those are all examples of data science problems. Um, you can use graph algorithms and um, NLP modeling as, as some techniques for, for solving those sorts of problems. And yeah, so essentially, the combination of those two types of data is where it's quite interesting. And there's not much from what I see in the field that, that does that. So I, I've done my own prototypes and notebooks for um, auto-suggesting new connections and, and, and things like that. So as a quick wrap up, um, personal knowledge management, or PKM, has evolved over time. And one of the earliest approaches you could see in a pre-digital form through a Zettelkasten system. Markdown is a, is a popular file format um, for storing digital notes. Uh, modern software can extend Markdown to capture different things like um, LaTeX math equations or mermaid diagrams, just a real mix but especially connected notes, which I've given a flavor of today. And I've shown how connected notes can, be, can, can look for study notes, but there are many use cases that people have. Um, and finally, I, I developed Obsidian tools to augment my PKM workflows. And that, yeah, there's just so much that can be done with, with this data and uh, through data science. So yeah, this is only really giving a, a flavor of it. And that's it. Thank you, Mark. And do we have any questions? Thanks for the talk, Mark. You added a bunch of words with spacey that were the most common words, the genetic associations you have in your notes. Did you do any synonyms for those, as a list of similar words? Word similarity. Um, it's not something I have, have done proper development on, but yeah, you can look at things like cosine similarity. So um, you could develop a matrix there. So in, in my one, it would be like 500 by 500. And if you do all those calculations, you could then see which are the um, most similar notes. So you know, it's definitely something that, that, that you can do. Um, yeah, like in one area of NLP, um, 
And yeah, that's what makes the NLP analytics very interesting for me. And another hit. Hi, Mark. Thank you for the talk. Very interesting. Um, I noticed you mentioned that you used uh, multiple vaults. Um, would you be able to give us a brief explanation about um, the, the benefits of using one vault or using multiple vaults? Yes, essentially, um, well, some people even just have one vault and just have all of their notes in there, almost like a monorepo. Um, I, I think for me, I, I've got quite a few vaults and it is a bit clunky moving between them. Um, but yeah, essentially I've made a few. So I've, I've got one here for my, um, uh, for my study notes, but I've got something else that's very different, um, like learning a language like Portuguese, for example. Um, and um, even like, you know, leak code practice, like you can store code snippets. So um, yeah, I think separation of things is, is quite useful, but some people do like a massive dump of their notes. So it's, it's very much what, what works best for you. Okay, and time for one more question. Hi. Thank you, that was a really interesting talk. I was just wondering, um, you mentioned going back over the notes. Do you, as you're kind of maintaining it, do you just happen to read the notes which are similar to the ones you're adding, or do you use any kind of spaced repetition system or something like that to go over the notes again? Yeah, there are, there, there are some extra plugins in Obsidian where, where people can do things like spaced re repetition. Um, I've kept mine quite vanilla, um, but yeah, you can, you can use it for those different things. I, I think for me, um, because I had assessments every few weeks on, on my modules, um, I, I would just like narrow down um, the set of notes that I've done recently and then uh, just, just cycle through those and think um, are there ways that I can improve them. In, in my first term at Cambridge, um, because it was very early on, um, I did um, create um, a set of Anki, um, Anki notes um, to um, separate things a bit more. but. Yeah, definitely different ways you can go about things. Like if I just, I can even um, look at a random note, and if I'd be looking at that, I think, oh, there's still bits I've tagged there that I need to clean up. Um, so yeah, like you, you can go about it in many different ways. Okay, well, thank you to adding to all of our knowledge graphs, Mark. Let's say thank you once again.